Krithika Ramesh with Tobacconist and Cigars and Leisure, and here we have... Hi, I'm Jose Oliva with Oliva Cigar Company. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your company, Jose. Um, can I call you Jose? Yes, sir. Mr. Yes. Oliva. Um, let's talk about what you're presenting this year at IPCPR 2015. What new products are you showing off in your booth this year? Well, we don't have a new cigar for the year. We just won Cigar of the Year with one of our cigars, and so the real focus has been around that cigar. We did make a commemorative humidor that holds 60 cigars. It's a thousand humidors, uh, and they, they have one, uh, they have 60 cigars, 20 of each size, of the Oliva Siri V Melania, which was the Cigar of the Year. Wonderful. So, tell us a little bit about yourself, outside of the cigars. Well, outside of the cigars, uh, I serve in the Florida Legislature, and so that takes up a tremendous amount of my time, much more than I thought it would when I first got involved. But it gives me a good opportunity to bring some of my understanding about business to government. Uh, and it gives me an opportunity to be able to express to other lawmakers that maybe have not been in the same position as I have as an entrepreneur and making them understand the kind of effects that regulations have on business, the kind of negative effects that they usually have. So not to mention working in other areas that are important for our state, like education and healthcare. So that's been a good experience. So do you think um, being involved in the legislature, um, are you able to take on any challenges with your company, maybe that you've had recently or in the past, um, understanding it from that perspective? Well, would it, I, think, I think being in a family business helped me be a better legislator than being a legislator helps me be a better businessman. The truth is that in the legislature, you're you're not a you're not the boss. You have to get consensus, and you and people have to believe in the policies you're pursuing. You have to be able to make make your case and convince people of that. In a family business, it's the same way. Uh, you don't have a say over everything. You have we have a close knit family, but uh, when there's an idea, you have to be able to sell everyone on it. You have to be able to get that support for it. So in a lot of ways, they, there are a lot of parallels to either. Absolutely, great. Um, so, what are your goals for your company this year? The goal this year in our company has really been more internal than external. Having, having one cigar of the year has really given us the ability to focus internally in our company because from an outward standpoint, obviously, it, it's getting that kind of accolade has benefited all of our lines very positively. And so what we've done is we've focused a lot on how do we improve our internal systems. When you, when you sell cigars and manufacture them and also grow tobacco, you have a very complex, regardless of its size, a very complex company. And so we've been looking to have uh, accounting and computer and software systems that can encompass the entire company. It's a huge undertaking mm -hmm. and it's, it's been very painful this year doing it, but it was a great year to do it because this year we don't have to focus on a new product and right. the development of that. We can really look inward. Fantastic. So um, what are you most proud of that you have personally accomplished? Well, well, I think going around this show, you know, we started at this show 20 years ago with one booth. And so I, I think what I'm most proud of is that as a, as a family, we were able to start a very small company with no resources and we were able to work together throughout two decades to turn it into one of the important companies in this business. So I think I'm, I'm most proud of the ability to be able to work with my family over a very long period of time successfully. So over all these decades of your business, what can you say is your personal favorite cigar? Well, that really changes, and I think it's true for a lot of cigar smokers. You don't always, you, you have a favorite cigar, but it also depends on the time of day. And as, as your palate changes, what you smoke changes. So, for instance, at a show like this, I'll have six, seven cigars a day. So I'm going, I'm going to mostly smoke something light because I don't want, to, I don't want something that's very heavy. Right. If I'm just having one cigar that day after mm -hmm. a nice dinner, I'm going to smoke one of our more heavier cigars. Okay. 
So which cigar do you have here? This is a this is a Connecticut wrapped cigar. Connecticut wrapper gets its name originally from having been grown in Connecticut. Nowadays, the majority of it's grown in Ecuador. Uh, but really, it's a, it's a much lighter smoke. So you, when you blend it, you blend with lighter tobaccos. And what you end up with is a very mild, creamy type smoke. If you have to have seven or eight cigars back to back, it's not a bad selection. It's a good, good light one to keep you going yeah. throughout the day. Okay, great. Um, so what would you like to say about, or to your fans um, of Oliva Cigars, about the show, about your company, about future plans? I would, I would probably say that our commitment remains the same. Uh, we, we rarely introduce new cigars, and certainly not with the frequency of other companies. Our commitment is to, first and foremost, grow the best tobacco we can, ensure consistency throughout our product line, and never to bring something to market that is not an ideal uh, value and truly the best expression of what we can do in that area. So uh, our, our commitment remains intact, regardless of, of the success that we've had. We still take a tremendous amount of pride in making cigars that are attainable to the average cigar smoker mm -hmm. and that rank among the highest cigars in the world. Absolutely. And for a little fun twist, um, Tell us something that you like to do on your free time or something that you like to do with your family. Um, you know, you're very busy with the legislature and with your company, so what do you like to do on your leisurely time? I don't really get a lot of that, and I'm a political junkie, so whenever I do get free time, I'm usually dedicating it to that. Uh, but my favorite thing to do, we do once a year when uh, we rent a uh, small townhouse out on a beach. Oh, great. And we really, there's no frills, and we spend the whole week out there. Mm -hmm. And that starts this Tuesday. So <laughs> oh, that so you are. That is the favorite time of my year. That's amazing. So, um, do you uh, just, w which beach? The Siesta Key. Nice. Excellent. Good, good time of year to be out there. Oh, it's excellent. I love it. It just, there's nothing like being by the water. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time thank today. You so um, good luck with the rest of the show, and we hope um, to come and visit you over the next few days. Love it. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you.